Hey everyone, we recently did a turn signal install to a 20 to our 2021 CF Moto 600 Touring. We've gotten a lot of responses on people wanting to know how to do it. So we're going to do a walkthrough on the stuff that you need and how to do it to hopefully help everybody out. Um, so here's a couple of the things that you need, which are different color tapes. Um, our wires are soldered together, but if you don't have a solder, you can use these crimp and shrink butt splice waterproof um once you get them on you heat them up usually with a heat gun is best but you can use a lighter um you will need the ep36 that's the flasher um we use a different one on ours but they're all led compatible so napa advanced auto anyone that has the ep36 will work um here's the this is the switch right is that what it's called this is the switch um we got from napa it's the RS1061 um, and then some liquid tape. Then you also need this Hopkins four flat converter. The part number is 48895. Um, these are some basic tools that you'll need. Anything in there? So we're gonna take it apart and try to show you guys how to install the signals in the dash and to where they look like they came like that from the factory. We also wanted to add that our machines are already done. This is just a walkthrough step-by-step step to help anybody out that wants this done. Okay. okay. On the right side of your unit when you're sitting on it, it's going to be the left side when you're off of the unit. You need to find this connector. It's right here on the top. You push the plastic piece down, the plastic clip right here, my middle finger's on, and you pull it out. When you pull this out, you turn it around, there's a blue wire. You can see right there. That's where I snipped it. And I connect it to the opposite side of the connector where my wire is going straight to the lights. And then if you look on this side of the connector, uh, right down there, the middle wire is missing. The middle wire is missing. Um, there is an orange and uh, empty in the middle and a blue. That blue wire would be the wire that CF motor would have used to actually add signals. You can also tell that's in the middle and the other side that we cut is also in the middle and it's baby blue. It says baby blue color right here is what you're looking for. You snip that, you add your own wire to it and I only put enough wire on to get to right here to the center of the unit. And that's going to be on your left side when you're when you're standing in front of the unit. Pause it. Okay, now on the the left hand side, the actual left when you're sitting on the unit, you have to remove this 10 millimeter bolt right here, and you have to remove this right here. And we're going to fold this down a tiny bit to get access to the left hand side turn signal. And I'll be back once I get that all undone. Okay, I had to remove that clip up there, the 10 millimeter. And then you also have to remove just this one. Once you get that done, you can pull this down to access your harness. Okay, the, this black wire is, this wire right here, I don't know if you can see, it's coming directly off of the light. That harness is. It's running up here. There's a clip up here. If you just cut the wire tie portion off, you can reuse the clip. Just leave the clip in there and slide another wire tie in there. And that's what I did. And on this side, um, it's going to be an orange wire. Um, it's going to be a, a orange wire. And I would just follow, follow this wire right here that you can see comes off of your harness right here for your lights just follow this up it's going to be the middle one and it's going to be an orange color i tapped into it right there and i crimped it and i used the um uh watertight uh 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 connector and then i uh i heat shrink it heat it's like heat shrink there's glue in it so that's all sealed up 
Then after that, you're done. You just run the wire back up through your thing into the middle where, where the other wire was ran from the other side. And I'll put this back together and I'll get back to you. Okay, so this is my wire that's coming from my turn signal on the left. I used a red. I would recommend probably using a green. I did my wife and hers came out a lot nicer, but she has a box on the front. I don't want to take it off. So um, this, you can make a green wire. And what's going to happen is it's going to come up here to the middle and this would be the blue wire that's coming from your left turn signal you bring them up here and what i did was uh i soldered them this is the module you're going to end up using uh that's the hopkins one. this is the hopkins module you need for to make the backlights work so what you do is, is the green wire goes to the right front turn signal. The yellow wire is the left turn signal. So what you do is, is I soldered, I soldered my wires in right here. Underneath this black is uh, solder. And I soldered all my wires and, and then uh, taped them up pretty good. And then I did the same thing on this side. And you want to... Put these, this wire to, all right, I straightened it out some. So this wire is coming from your left, the actual turn set off of your harness from the light. That's what's going to give you your, this is, you're gonna, we're going to put power to this wire. The green wire is coming from the module and the yellow wire is coming from the module. And that the green wire is going to the uh, right front, the yellow is going to the left front. And I tie three wires in because this other red wire is gonna is run running to my dash for the turn signal on the dash. And the same thing with this one, it's got a red wire because it's coming to the dash. And the yellow one is going to the Hopkins. The red one is from the turn signal. And then that's all we need for that. So you can, okay, the red wire on the, on the five side, on the five side of the Hopkins connector, uh, it'll have the red wire. The red wire needs to be ran to the back of the bike, all the way to the back. The white wire is your ground. And where I grounded it was right here. This is a ground bolt. If you take that off, mm -hmm. If you take that bolt off, you can ground your ground right there. And that's where I grounded that. Yeah. Okay, now here's my flasher. The flasher is, is uh, it's a three-prong flasher. And you don't have to use this piece. You can just use terminals. And uh, I would just put heat shrink around them. So you're going to have terminal number uh, 49 is going to be this one. And that's going to be B plus. So that's going to go to power. This one is going to be your load. That's going to go to the switch. And this one is going to be a ground. And, and I did that um, just like this. This one is right here. You can see my loom. That's going up to my handlebars where my switch is mounted. That's gonna be uh, the load. That's where you wanna put the load load one on. This one is for is going to the switch on the the one for the left side. That's why it's marked blue because I tagged it like that so I knew which one I was doing once I put them through the loom. So that I know the blue is going to the left hand side or to the right hand side. And obviously the other one's going to the left hand side. So there'll be three wires coming off of off of the switch that we're gonna mount. And uh there'll actually be four wires because what you'll have you'll have the right turn signal, left turn signal, you'll have uh a beep uh uh and a load and then there'll be a ground coming out to to light up that to light up that specific uh rocker i have and i grounded that right here on this side in the same spot opposite side i grounded it 
And then what I did is to get my power, I you got to hit these little red things down on this on your fuse box and then it pops off. And what I did is I ran a fuse tap. This is the fuse for the um, cigarette lighter. I don't I don't really use it, but I didn't want to cut into the harness right there. So what I did is I put a fuse tap in. The 15 is what's usually in it. So I left that one the same. And I put a 10 amp for my for my uh, turn signals. And then what I did is uh, I tapped it there. And then if you look down inside of these crosses that are unused, I used like a little pick tool and pushed it. A little yellow piece falls out the bottom. And I pushed my wire through the bottom of it and I heat shrink it right there. And that's where my power is coming from for it. And um, the reason I did it right there is because that's key on power and key off power. And uh, let me get back to you in a minute. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to measure wherever you want your switch. My switch is right here. Show you. My switch is right here on this side. I'm I'm put it right there. So uh, you want to measure the length of uh, wire you're gonna need from there. I ran mine down underneath the cluster, underneath the cluster, and back down to right around here. So what I did is I just measured it like this, got an approximate it, and then I'm gonna cut uh, four pieces of wire this long. And I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we cut the wires to go from our dash into our, near our fuse box. This is going to be my yellow one. So this will be the uh, left side if you're sitting on. And I'm just going to strip it. And then put... A connector just like this on it I couldn't find any heat shrink ones so what I do is is I come I crimp it down and then I get a piece of heat shrink and put the heat shrink on the bottom of it and then uh, do it that way let's get a so that's all you do and it's tight and then I put heat shrink right here maybe I'll do a one heat shrink for you guys but um, I'm not using this for anything this was only bought for demonstration purposes so I might not do it but you can do it um, I'll be back to you I got to do the other four wires and then I'll be right back all right this is the switch we're using that's what it looks like it has a light on the right and the light on the left the bottom of it has four connectors this one is the ground this one is your load. This one's going to be the right turn signal and the left turn signal. It doesn't matter how you do it right now because you can turn this either way once you get it set up. So there's really no wrong way to get it done. Only when you getting ready to mount it, then you want to make sure it's in the right side. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hook the... I'm going to use the black for my uh, ground. I'm going to use the green for the right turn signal. I'm going to use the red for the load and the left for my left turn signal yellow or yellow for my uh, left turn signal and they'll just push on and then what I would do is if I was going to mount it on my four wheeler I would heat shrink I would put a piece of heat shrink over here and I would heat it up and shrink it like mine are mine are right here See, you can tell I heat shrink everything all up. That's just so no water gets in there, hopefully. And uh, that's how, it, this is what it would look like. And then I'll pause it. Okay, on my, on my unit, I, I uh, pulled this one off and I switched it to this. This was like six or seven bucks on Amazon, I think with free shipping. I'll put a link in the description if you want this one. 
uh, cycle gear if you live in uh, I guess cycle gears all, all, all over the place but if you go on cycle gears uh, website uh, you can find these they're like 695 they're 695 just for the cover and it just pops off with a special little plastic tool um, uh, I had the tool from an other switches it didn't come with the tool to pull, pop it off but it just literally just pops off um, I'll be back and this one lights up that's why I got it and then I got this plastic cover I think I got the part number for that if you want it so the switch is inside of a plastic cover Advanced Auto is where the cover came uh, the cover this uh, case came from advanced auto and what I did is I uh, cleaned it cleaned the the I cleaned the holder with uh with the like brake cleaner and I cleaned the bottom of the uh, winch with uh with a brake cleaner and then uh rubbing alcohol make sure all the oils are off and then i got gorilla tape that says it holds 38 pounds or something double side it and i heated i heated this up heated this up then i put the tape on there and i heated it up the top up some more and i stuck it on there and it sat for like a day um and it's been rock solid ever since it doesn't really move and it works for me. But uh, there's other places you can do it. You can put it inside right like right here in your tank. You can cut a square hole right there. But I would take this off and make sure you, if there's enough room for it before you do that. Or some, you can put it up here or wherever you want. Or even use a different size. Uh, you can use any three three position rocker switch on off on yeah you can use like a six dollar one this one is like uh, 35 dollars for this one uh from napa but uh yeah so this is what it's gonna look like and then i'm gonna hook it to the other part that it needs to go to so i can show you guys what it's gonna look like we did it there so you wouldn't have to drill anything all right so if this is our switch right we would run it down through there underneath the cluster and you can come out right here this is where mine comes out that's where i put it so what you would have is uh four wires you would have uh, a left turn signal which is the yellow wire the green which is the right turn signal you'd have the red which we're using for the load and a black is going to go straight to a ground that's these grounds right here that's where i grounded it like i said earlier so what you would do is you'd run these down you'd hook your relay in right here this is your load coming from the switch you go to the middle one which is your load then if you look on the bottom uh it has a positive on one side and a negative on the other but they don't all have that so you hook uh the positive that the the tap that we ran out of there out of the fuse box that we ran underneath we would tie the positive into the positive terminal right here and then we would go from here this one to a ground and i went to right there i also put two wires on this one the wire that's coming from the switch that's black that i'm using for a ground that one and this wire this wire right here that's ground i got them both tied in right here to a ground and then on this this with this uh hopkins one the white wire is a ground i shortened the wire and i grounded it i grounded it on this side like i said earlier so that's grounded there then what you would do is uh uh i just everything will fit right here nice and tidy um and then what you would do after that is, uh, I'll be right back. All right. So now, you, so now to get into to get your cluster off, what you would do is just pop these pins out. One on this side. It's all us pretty good too. Most of the time. And pop this one out. Then you push 
Oh, you pull back and push forward. All right, then when you get to this point, you pull this harness right here and it will unclip this little gray this little gray thing right here holds you it in when it's like that it has slots in it that allow these allows this to slide in one side and this the other it also has this piece right here so you can only put it in one way okay and then on this side basically all you do is find your blue baby blue wire again and your orange wire right there. And um, what I did is I used these uh, Wago, they're W-A-G-O connectors. They're waterproof. They're supposed to be pretty good. I use these connectors in case I ever want to take my, uh, my um, cluster off and I don't want to cut the wires and have to re-splice them and cut them and re-splice them a bunch of times. So I use these. And what I did is I just ran them through these holes that were already here. And, uh, and basically all you're doing is tapping in to the wire that's coming out of the turn signal again with it. And uh, the blue one is the right turn signal and the orange one is the left turn signal. And you're just basically tapping them in. Tapping them in. You can tap them wherever you want. As long as they're tapped in, you can tap them in off of the switch wire if you have enough. Your switch wires will be running down underneath this cluster and they'll come out wherever you want them. And you could, you could use these to tap into. Um, I would recommend, uh, definitely recommend soldering them if you can. But if you can't, um, I would uh, at least use these, uh, these uh, heat shrink uh, connectors so that you don't get moisture in there or anything and they'll stay together a lot longer and everything will hold up. So at this point, pretty much everything in the front is done. Now we're gonna move on to the doing the rear. And for the, the, the rear, I got the another Hopkins one to show you. It's basically the same one that's in there. Well, it is the same one that's in there. And uh, what you want to do is you, what you want to do is you undo it. And um, I don't need that right now. It's just so the front of it. You want the white wire. I shortened mine for the ground. You need the white wire. The brown wire is not used. To so make things less complicated, you can cut it or just wrap it up but i cut mine the brown wire is not used so you don't need it um the green wire is used and give you a lot of it i don't know why the white wire and then on the back of it this would be the back this would be a five to four connector and then on the back of it what you would do is you would cut this off. You would cut this connector off. Like that. And then uh, split the wires. I'm trying to go fast. All right. You split the split the wires up. They they'll just pull and, you, and they'll come apart. And they'll leave the insulation on them. So the only two wires you need on the back side of the Hopkins is going to be will be will be your yellow and your green for the right and left. And I just left these two hooked together. And then the red one that that these wires are going to the front, but this red one needs to go to the back with needs to go to the back this is going to be your brake light this is going to go to, hook to your brake light
pause it for a second. All right, now I'm just going to put a heat shrink connector. I added, uh, I'm going to add wire to it to show you. So there's that. And then uh, let me get some more red wire. all right we put a connector on it to add wire for the back for the brake lights and we're going to heat this uh heat shrink terminal up just to show you if you've never seen one if i get yeah. a real fucking lighter let's just get your heat gun out Doesn't help that it's a little windy we're outside. Oh man, this sucks. Where's my torch at? Oh, pause it, we'll get something else that's better. Hold on. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Tony gotta use the heat gun. Heat gun works way, way better. Lighter Lighter wouldn't work, so we're using a heat gun. Alright, I think we burned down enough. Don't worry, it'll be cool in a minute. We're in Minnesota. Okay, so this would be inside here where mine's at. I just did this for demonstration purposes. And this is what it would look like. The red would be coming to the back. You would run it underneath this panel right here on this side of the unit. And, and you would run it from there, look right down here. And it would come out. Let's see. And it would come out right here. This, this is my wire. And it, then it goes up. And it goes into these, see those white connectors back there? That's where they go. Okay, the one all the way to the right that's closest to the camera, that's going to be for your left side turn signal. Then the one all to the far, I'm sorry, if you're sitting on the unit, the one to the far right will be your right turn signal. The one closest to me will be your left turn signal. The one in the middle is uh, not used. So on that connector right there, what you would do is there's a, there's a electrical, some kind of electrical tape, uh, like a cloth. You would cut that back on this side of the connector, the side, the side going, uh, Going to the front of the unit, you would cut it all back on each side. On uh, you might have to take off. Uh, um, well, you will have to probably take off uh, the tape from the middle one also, but you won't be using you you just taking it off just to get to the wires. So you cut that back and. Uh, go about two inches back and um, there's going to be a green wire with a yellow tracer on the left top corner when you unplug it on both of them go back as far as you can on that specific wire and you cut it on the right side and you cut it on the left side on the left connector and then you hook the yellow turn signal that's coming from the module. You hook the 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 left turn signal to the yellow wire, to these yellow wires, uh, and you connect the uh, green one to the right uh, wire that you cut. Then what you do is you're going to have two wires left that are that you that you had cut that are on the that are that uh are on um that are the, that are on the opposite side of the where the signals got connected one of those you will tape up the one on the left i would recommend taping up 
and uh, just securing it so it can't touch anything. Um, I taped mine with electrical tape and uh, taped it up real nice. And then the one on the right, you want to add, you want to add the red wire. You want to add this red wire that you ran back. You want to uh, add the red wire and then uh, everything will work. All your turn signals will, your turn signal will work. And um, you do have to remove the back of the bike because uh, unless you've got somebody with small hands that can unbolt that. There's two 10 millimeter bolts. There's one right here. And then there's one facing this way. Um, I couldn't get it off, so I removed the back of my, uh, the back half of the four-wheeler to get to it. Um, and then, uh, these wires underneath the connector on, on, on the left side, there's a burgundy wire. That's your, that's a power wire when your lights are on. So what I did is I, um, I tapped into there with another wire and I, uh, got a ground right off of this wire, off of this uh, bolt, 10 millimeter bolt. I ran a ground wire from there and then I ran it down to my license plate and it gave me a license plate, a license plate, uh, light. And that's how I did it. Um, to remove this, uh, you got to undo this 10 millimeter, this 10 millimeter, and then there's one right here, a 10 millimeter. And then you have to undo these two. Uh, let me see. Undo this one and this one. And then what happens is you got to undo this clip right here and this clip right here. And you just pull up on these a little bit and you'll hear a pop. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt underneath there that has to come out. And a 10 millimeter bolt on this side that has, that has to come out. And then... The, the whole thing will come come off. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt. I had to do it twice for two different units. And uh, that's how I did it. And um, I would recommend you doing <clears throat> all the wires. Besides the wires that are in the front headlights, I would, I would change those to green. Because then you'll know your whole right side of your unit signal wires all of it is green and all of it on the other side is yellow i did have to buy a i did have to buy loom i'll i'll post the size of the loom the loom i got and then um i did also buy extra trailer wire which is right here and uh but i i didn't buy it till after i did mine and I did my wife's so I can match all the colors to the right colors. Um, this is the the longest um, the longest Hopkin module I could find. It was 72 inches of uh, wire. And if you have a two up, you will need to add at least a foot and a half of wire to make it reach to the back of the unit. Um, but other than that, uh, it's pretty easy. If you have any questions. Um, you, you can let me know. And I would recommend getting the loom from Napa, uh, cause their loom is soft all the time. Um, I had bought some other loom from somewhere else and it was, uh, cold and it was like really brittle. So I took that off and got Napa loom and it just works better. And then, um, after I put all my wires to the loom, I completely taped it all the way around so nothing can get inside of it. Because the loom is split from Napa, it makes it really easy to get your wires in. But um, if you have any questions, you can uh, message. Um, hope it wasn't too complicated. It's really not that bad of a deal. The worst part is having to take the back of the four-wheeler off to get to the connectors. Um, I don't have a picture of it, and it's a lot of work to pull it off. So if you have any questions, you can just uh, reach out. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to just show everybody, for those who didn't see the previous videos, on what the signals look like. That's what running lights. That's what your lights on.
and of course high beam is the same. Alright, now do this. Okay, let's show the um the dash. Oh you can't see the dash. Can yeah, you see you the dash? Yeah. Gotta put it back together, but we're just gonna show you. There's a, another video if you look that I posted. Oh, Hold on one second. Oh no, it's unplugged. Pause it. Okay. Technical difficulty. Okay, now we're, we're gonna plug this back in. And this is on this side. This little uh, raised piece will be on this side. And you just stick it in. You can unsnap it if you want, like I just did. Then you put it in and you, oh. Yeah. All right, so this gray piece just popped off. You just have to snap it in right here and on the other side, the same spot. So what you do is you just slide it in there like that. <laughs> like that. Wait. Thing. You hold it on the sides, keep it, put it in, and then this pulls back, locks it in, and then this little tab right here hooks into this, there's a piece right here that you can see, I don't know if you can see it, this little piece that my finger's on, it just slides into there, and then it holds itself up, pause it, so now it's all in, and for anybody that's wondering, um, I thought these were uh, power on, power off, uh, uh, key on, key off power, but these have constant power. I have no idea why CF Moto put them there, but these are constant power. If you need constant power for something, um, no, hand warmers, you need a key on, key off. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know exactly what this is for. I had to get a schematic to, to see what it's for. But now we're gonna just pop this back on. And it just pops back on pretty easy. It just, uh... Of course it'll be a... You gotta line it up with these two. These pins right here on the bottom. And then it'll just slide right in. And then, you, the, of course, you got to do the sides. These little side pieces. These two, they got to go inside of there on either side. Just like that. All right. Do you want to show them the dash cluster? You're going to screw it back in first. We'll just pause it let you get it all together. Alright, so now we're going to show you what the dash looks like with the signals. And of course these light up left and right. And then I'll show you the back too. That's why we did this video. Because a lot of people were asking. Hold on, let me turn the lights on. Lights are on? Ready? Yep. Three. Turn the signal. And there you have it. Is that everything? Yep. And if anyone, again, has any questions, comment, message, and we'll be more than happy to help. This is a, this is the, uh, this is a connector for the, uh, Turn, uh, turn signal flasher if you want to use this. I used it on mine. Um, but you could just use the terminals straight to it if you want to save a couple bucks. I would just um, put the terminals on. And then um, put a piece of heat shrink around each one. And then heat shrink them on there. So you have a nice uh, sealed connection. But I use these. Okay. And then just ran a um, wire tie around the 
around the uh, turn signal uh, flasher and the bottom of this, and it'll hold it together pretty tight. You can put um, dielectric grease in them all too, and that'll help keep uh, water off of them also. Um, yeah, but uh, there's a lot of other ways that you can do this. This is just the way that I found that worked for me. Um, but good luck. Thanks. Here's the diagram that my husband wrote up. Kind of walks in, through everything he just... Terms. It's kind of like in simple terms. Um, also, we wanted to note that if you need to see how to take the side covers off of the four-wheeler, if you go and look under um, my videos, there's uh, make tuning light rock lights installation. That shows you how to take it off step by step. Um, so again, There's here no is the diagram. It completely off. What is that? There's no need to take it completely off. There's no need to take it comp completely off. Unless if you're... you're worried about damaging your, uh, covers. If you're worried about damaging your covers, I would take it completely off. Well, I hope all this helps. If you have any questions, just reach out. We'll keep an eye on comments to get back to people. Um, Good luck.